you're pointing at me because someone's going to start right <laughs> we, don't, we don't cut these we don't cut these episodes nope. so um we just like talk yeah so actually I'm starting now hello <laughs> hi <laughs> and welcome to a new episode of time for you I'm Shelia Stevens and coming to you from near Frankfurt on Main in Germany this is my dear friend and colleague Leah Vanley who's in Zurich in Switzerland mm. yeah sometimes I like to say yeah, where hi. we are for the new yes. people for the new That's people true. coming in. And um, on this podcast, we're nurturing love and presence and well-being, as you hopefully already know. And today, Leah, I wanted to chit-chat with you about something that's been coming up in some coachings uh, the last couple of weeks. And I don't really have a like fifty title for it right now, but I'll just jump in with, you know, sometimes we just need a vacation with a capital V. So I don't mean a vacation necessarily where you go off to some beautiful location and take, you know, a mini holiday, or um, I'm not talking about necessarily um, going outside and sitting on your balcony for an hour and taking a, a vacation, although you can do those things, they can yes. be part, of, they can be part of the process, but Sometimes we just need a vacation with a capital V from our own mental busyness. And so I'll just try to explain like what's been coming up. So I've had some clients recently who, in for whatever reason, have been feeling a little bit stressed, um, a little bit overwhelmed um, with their lives, with their businesses, and the first kind of thing that sometimes happens when we get into that state of stress and overwhelm is one of two things like that I see a lot also in myself in the past, which is we kind of almost go in the direction of wanting to change something on the outside yeah, so that we can feel better on the inside. So that might be, if you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed, you might be like, Oh, I've got to get less clients in my calendar. I've got to get less work on my plate. So they're looking to change uh, schedules, workloads, and and those things can be very um, practical and helpful. And it might even actually be time to do those sort of, sorts of things. Um, some people are at a point that they just feel like it's gotten so much what's going on in their life that they just want to get away they, so they they get into this feeling of i need to escape this situation because they feel like the situation is the thing that's causing the chaos right and um they might be looking to um take a sick leave uh go on a sabbatical uh leave their job and do something totally different but it's it's kind of always like this feeling of i've got to change something on the outside so that i can get to a place of more calm. And then what happens is though, then they start thinking about um, what needs to be changed on the outside, circumstances, situations, and they can't even make a decision what to do. And why? Because they have no mental capacity to have a clear thought. So they're telling themselves, I need to change something as simple as I need to maybe like just as an example tell my boss like I can't take on this much work um but not even a conversation ever takes place because it, it's just something they're thinking about in their head all the time and they can't even find the way forward to do the thing and so what what I wanted to look at with you together today Leah is like how and and again, I want to I want to emphasize it can really be true that we it's time to change something on the outside, but I want to encourage people to first start when the inside, um, and that's a huge thing because this whole the whole three principles of Sid, that discovered by Sydney Banks that we're talking about on the podcast all the time are also called by other people, for example, Michael Neal, this inside out understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, the understanding that um, our life, our reality, our experience of life is created from the inside out and not the other way around. And so the first place to look is like, 
what is the amount of mental busyness that I have going on, right? Like how much of my day am I spending thinking about this situation, trying to solve this situation, mm -hmm. trying to make a decision about something and how that all those thoughts are kind of just filling up and clouding our, yeah. our mental space and kind of becoming aware that mm, more thinking seems a lot like the logical thing to do we've been taught sort of to think our way to a solution but we're asking you to go the exact opposite direction so like literally it's a paradigm shift for a reason like the minute you feel you need to speed up your thinking about solving something is to take your foot off of the gas and take a mental vacation in a way I mean it's just a metaphor it's not mm -hmm. you know which really means just like, you know, you're thinking too much about yourself and what's going on in your life. And you're not going to get any clarity for yourself in that situation. You almost literally have to forget about yourself um, for a while. And it might be a long while, depending on how long you've been speeding yourself up. Like I remember back, Leah, when I was mm -hmm. um, working in advertising agencies and I, I kind of had this inkling that it was getting time for me to change careers or, or do something different. But I kept myself six year, long years in that situation because my mind was so busy around it. My clarity was so low, like this massive fog over my myself, like driving in, driving in fog. You know how that mm. is. You can barely see mm. your way forward. And all I really needed to do was just kind of stop thinking about all that so mm -hmm. much. And, and life presented me a, a huge turning point with the death of my brother, which, you know, Leah, yes. which suddenly like just put a, you know, a stick in the motor and, and stopped everything from working. And I just couldn't, I had to stop. And then I went on a sort of long kind of, I don't know how many eight weeks sabbatical because I had to. And in that time, I, I had the good grace that my mind could settle mm -hmm. down a little bit. And the more my mind settled down, the more little gaps started opening up. And I started to be able to see what was necessary to do. And so I don't know if I if I was explaining that very well, Leah. It sounded very abstract to me, but um yeah, it's 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 kind of a... I'm trying to think of the word the it's the opposite of what you think so what yes. are you hearing in that leo and um, totally and it's it's sometimes that's the most difficult thing to do it sounds so simple and sometimes it's not because our head is really persisting and and annoying and telling us that we can't stop thinking about the thing and it's going to get worse if we stop thinking about it right so the 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 content tells us not to stop and that's so effed up so that's why often we we don't trust that that could be the way out because it seems as if uh, uh, dangerous or yes. or uh, whatever it when we don't when we we're not thinking about it it something really bad could happen so that's what I often see with people that they somehow know but it's so um it's so strong like the content mm. about the illness about the job about the marriage about money about so to really let go is is takes courage in a way yeah and that's why sometimes it's easier to really experiment the, with this idea and to start to to let go of your thinking with small stuff mm. like just to to Build a muscle, like, oh, here, okay, I'll try. Oh, with, shall I buy a 
black or blue jeans. I don't know. I, I'm making something up mm -hmm. or and just let it go and and have a look. Oh, I don't need the jeans or oh, I really want the blue one because actually I have three black ones. Oh, interesting. So just to to somehow it could be a possibility to exercise and i mean in the three principal community they <laughs> hello police um, <laughs> we often say there is nothing to do there is something to see and i think there is something to do in the awareness we can play with reality we can play with our thinking we can play with is it yeah. really true and that that also helped people who were really, really into this. Oh, I have to think my way into the solution. Yeah. And often, middle-aged, well, um, people who have a good job or family or are educated or have businesses or I just put it out. It's not true. It's a hypothesis. A hypothesis a hypothesis or <clears throat> um, that we think we did it with our brain. Yeah. And our brain helped. So for yeah. the the grades, the universities, the degrees, da, 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 da. so we don't really believe that it would help not to take our brain as a hel helper. Mm, and yeah. There to just try it out like in more neutral stuff or think that do things that do not matter that much. Okay. Could be helpful. So that was just what came to mind to kind of invite you to experiment with that. I, I love that, Leah. And and maybe maybe it'd be a really good time to kind of like, I just, what just came to me is to introduce people to this idea that we have two types of intelligence. Maybe they don't yeah. know. And and what, what you're talking about, Leah, is like, we do have an intellect. It is, totally. It, and we have access to um, experiences, things we've learned that are saved on the computer that is our brain. We mm -hmm. can access that sort of intellectual intelligence and there there are times when it totally makes sense to do that like if you are studying for an exam and you need to you know understand the principles of law that it's coming up on your law exam you you're gonna access your intellect at some point to do that yeah and totally yeah. and what i see with teenagers i work with teenager as well Sometimes that's a very crucial time when they're like in high school and they have to start to really learn and use their intellectual brain. Mm. They start to worry as well at the same time. Mm. Interesting. Isn't that interesting? Interesting, yeah. So we, we start to misuse our intellect. Yeah. That's the point. So it's very helpful in certain areas and it's not helpful at all in others exactly that's a really that's really interesting Leah. oh that might be in a whole other podcast episode to talk about that yeah so we have this type of you know intellectual um intelligence and but then we have a deeper intelligence right we have this intelligence that some it's got a million names in a, in a million different philosophies right you know you might call it um, that little voice inside of yourself that's guiding you to more health, um, to more clarity. You might say it's my intuition. Um, it's, some people say it's listening to your heart and not your head. Like we call it sometimes in the three principles community, mind your deeper intelligence, right? And it's realizing that if you're in that state of stress and overwhelm and thinking that your outside circumstances definitely need to change or you need to escape them, that probably, or I don't, I'm going to say 100% of the time, <laughs> and a gewagte Aussage, uh, a brave statement, <laughs> <laughs> is, you know, all that's happened is, is you've just gone, you're using your, your intellectual intelligence too much in an area where it's not needed. Mm -hmm. And that little vacation to put it aside is the way to 
calm your mind, your personal mind and to then access that deeper intelligence, right? Yeah. That deeper intelligence that's going to be showing you, oh, okay, maybe, um, maybe I need to get a little more rest and take some, some time. Maybe, um, you know, maybe there's nothing to do. Maybe I've just gotten myself into, up into a tizzy thinking too much. Um, oh, maybe, um, maybe I do need to raise my prices as a coach and, and have less clients on my books, you know, like whatever the thing is, mm -hmm. but it's kind of switching um, to that other type of intelligence. And sometimes when I would be talking to Dick and Bettinger in some of our, you know, mentoring calls, he would be saying um, something like, it's about finding the balance between, mm. between those two types of yes. intelligence. Right. And as you pointed out, Leah, you know, at some point for a lot of people at some point in their life, and maybe a lot of them as teenagers switch over to that intellectual intelligence and then they get stuck there and mm -hmm. they start using that for everything. And then the intent, the use of intelligence gets out of balance completely. Right. Mm. Yeah. yeah, totally. So, yeah. And actually that's, that's a huge thing for me as well in my everyday life. Um, Sometimes I put it a bit <laughs> strange, I say. I really, really love to become dumber in a way. Like, I was so dependent on my intellect and analyzes. And I, I, I really also was proud of it in a way. But, I mean, it effed me up as well. I was scared and anxious and overwhelmed and and this wrapped up thinking just wasn't good for my life and mm. it led to really bad behavior and addictive stuff so um in the overdrive mode it's just not good for us and to to be willing to explore something else could open up a whole new way of being as it did for us yeah. And it's a lot cooler, guys. <laughs> it totally is a lot cooler. It totally is. Yeah. yeah. And I really love my brain when I need it. Like, it's cool. We can think, we can write, we can read, do stuff. But that's it. Yeah. As I think it was Einstein, but I haven't found actually the the in, the quote. But I heard it a lot. It's like, we we started to put the the brain on a pedestal and and didn't worship the gift of like um universal mind and when we start to change it and and let mind lead and little mind follow then it's just really cool as you said and dick as well yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. That's so, so cool. And I I hope that everyone who's listening to this, Leah, can hear just a little something in that, that, mm -hmm. that shift, deeper intelligence is so life-changing. Yeah. Um, you know, it can, it can catapult you out of that overwhelm within seconds. <sighs> it's not even something you need to, you know, to do in practice for a long time. It's like a pretty, it can be a pretty quick effect. Yes. Yeah. And for real, one thought away, as Sydney Banks always said. Yeah, definitely. From a different feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our invitation to you is like, go look for yourself because, you know, <laughs> we don't want you to believe everything we're saying, but um, feel into your own mm -hmm. heart, your own intelligence, see what you can see, hear what you can hear in that. And we hope that it will help you transform your life to the positive um, hope to hear you on the next episode of Time For You. Um, don't forget to follow us on Spotify or Apple Podcast um, or tell a friend. Leah, did you want to say something? To yes. That? Yes, good. And for the deeper feeling, there is um, My Secret Life online and it's on our website. You can just um, put your email in and get it for free and it's Oh, I mean, I look a bit stoned the whole time, but because I was in such a deep 
connected there was, feeling. There was in the spirit like, feeling. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa. But it's really cool because it touches you beneath the brain. Yeah. And that's just all we are we want for you. So Yeah, totally. So you can also get that at www um my secret life dash interviews.com and um yeah we hope to see you there you can spend a lot of time with me and Leah there we're on a lot all the interviews <laughs> so see bye. you on the next one bye guys <laughs>